Hi. Hello. I don't know. Hello. Hey, everybody. There oh, we there are. We are. Yay. Yay. We just had a little bit of a delay, but we're getting better. Uh huh. Hi. How is everyone? Uh, welcome to Labyrinth's ABCs and 123s of game schooling. Yay. Um, I am once again joined tonight. I'm Kathleen. I own Labyrinth Games and Puzzles in Washington, D.C. And I am joined tonight by Melissa. Hello. And Rich. Hello. Um, our educational outreach team. And we're here tonight to show you games about math. First time we did history, last time science, and tonight is math. Next week is going to be language games. Ooh. Yay. Um, so anyway, welcome to everyone, anybody who is here and joining us. And I'm glad that y'all have joined us. Um, so tell us what we're doing tonight. Ah, so today we are talking about math games. And in particular, there are a lot of math games. So today we're kind of focusing on the major four, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, with a couple other little things in there. Um, so this is for mostly our sort of younger friends, probably elementary school, middle school, a little bit of high school for some of them, uh, but a lot of our younger friends. And we do have a game that's a math game that is really super fun that high school kids and grown-ups can play that I quite enjoy. Yes. Um, I think it's important to note that I feel like almost all games have some math in them. Yes. Um, mo most games. Even games that don't seem to have math in them frequently have some kind of math. Mm -hmm. And I think at least at Labyrinth, we, a lot of times we get people in and they're like, I want a game to help my child with math. And I'm always like, well, what kind of math? Geometry or, you know, like it, there's there's oh, probability. Goodness. There's all different kinds of things that you can teach with a game. But usually what they're talking about is their child needs to learn their multiplication tables or they right. need to learn how to add quicker or figure out what subtraction is or something like that. So we decided that for our first foray into math, we would do that. We would do really, really focus on uh, arithmetic um, games, games that support arithmetic. This does mean, however, that these games aren't necessarily, I think, some of the most fun because they are definitely mathy. Although, I don't know. I love, there's a lot of games that here that I love, but I don't know. I don't know that I would choose to necessarily. Well, I would choose to play some of them. I would definitely choose to play Lovelace and Babbage, except for with my son because he kills me in it. I think it's but certainly anyway. fair to say that these are less thematic games than some right. Of the they're less thematic. I guess that's the thing. Yeah. Um, whereas I think that you can teach a lot of math with thematic games, and I'm sure in future episodes yep. of one two three ABC of Other game schooling around. ABC one two three <laughs> of game schooling, we will cover some of those games. Like for example, I think one of the mathiest games I've ever played is Power Grid. Like every time I play Power mm -hmm. Grid, my brain just melts from all the math I have to do. But um, and as is our usual habit, we're gonna go from younger kids to older kids. That is correct. Okay, so let's start. Sure. Our first game is. Uh, Zingo one two three. So there's a lot of uh, variants of the Zingo game. Um, what makes it Zingo is it's got this old-fashioned sort of uh, credit card thing where you punch it forward and pull it back, and then two things pop out. Mm -hmm. With one two three, we're focusing on numbers. So two numerals pop out, and then each player is going to have a sort of bingo card that has on the green side. It'll have symbols and the lettering so three balloons and the word three underneath here at the bottom here mm -hmm. if we can get past the glare um and then if that's too easy we've got the red side mm -hmm. um which will just have a little problem like one fish plus four fish but it doesn't say you have to count them um so it gets us used to the idea of counting out and there's these fun little symbols um, and also, it's just really fun to push the thing. So when this pushes forward and someone says, ooh, I have an eight, it's just like bingo. You know, they'll call out their eight, but they have to hunt it down first and show where it is. And they're not allowed to, to you know, snag the thing and then figure it out. You have to figure it out first. Um, so then we have a, a six here that's still left to go somewhere. And some other player would look for the six. Maybe on I the, have a six. You have a six. Ooh, and then right it goes there. over here. Yeah. 
And then, um, so I think some of the things that I think is, are, is fantastic with this game is that it expresses all of the various iterations of the number or a lot of them you first see the the roman or the arabic arabic numeral aspect of it but then you also see the word spelled out and you see a representation of what the number does so definitely for your preschool and even pre-k mm -hmm. um learners this is all of the stuff that they teach in school um and it's it's in it's kind of inherently learning it through play, which is really fantastic. Um, this side of it, which is the basic addition, um, really helps because you see the this number and this number added together, but they have to come up with what that number is in the Arabic actual numeral, which I think is, yep. this uh, it's one of my favorite things with this game. Yeah. And it's um, nice and tactile, too. Which it is, is really very tactile. This yeah. thing is really fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I have to tell you, people have seen this, and they're like, oh, I don't know. I have never, ever met a child who does not go bonkers for this machine. Like, <laughs> they, they love it. Um, it can, if you have multiple um, kids in your family, it can cause fights in our classrooms. <laughs> um, all of the children want to do the ch 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 ching um action and so we have very very strict rules in our classes that we must take turns um doing the zinger i think it's called a zinger it's really fun <laughs> now you can back in. Um, it's true. it is also i don't know if it's a positive or negative on the design but um these are these tiles are rounded on the top um, I don't know if anybody can see that. And they're kind of more square on the bottom. So they really need to go into this machine like this. And there's a little slash up here where people can put them in. Um, children frequently don't do that. And then they put them in backwards <laughs> and it makes it very hard to use it. But that is a important thing to note. When you're a parent, make sure that it's all right and that the kids are putting it in the curved end in first. Easy peasy. Um, but yeah, Zingo definitely is great. Zingo has, it's by Think Fun, which is a local game company, local to Washington, D.C. Their headquarters are, is in, um, I think it's in Alexandria. Yeah, in Alexandria, Virginia. They are now owned by Robinsberger because Robinsberger bought them a couple years ago, but they still have their main headquarters in this area. Um, and they have a lot of different Zingos. There's Zingos for reading readiness. There's a word one. There's a lot of different ones, and we may show you some of those in future um, streams. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> I can put it over here. Sure. All right. Next up, real yeah. quick, we're not going to spend too much time on these, but we do have Math Dice. Math Dice Oops, Junior. Sorry. Kathleen's throwing things. Sorry. And I'm going to open this up here. So, Math Dice Junior and Math Dice are really cool because they fit in your purse or your backpack and you can take them just about anywhere. Um, the way that these work, this is Math Dice Junior, um, and there is a game component for it, but I honestly, I don't use them that way. Um, you roll this main dice, the big white one, and you get a number, and then you roll all these nice big chunky colored dice, and you get some more numbers, and you're trying to find a way to add all these up to seven. Four, five, six, seven. Um, and this will work every single time. It's really amazing. Um, these aren't like normal regular dice. They're a little bit different so that that always works. Um, I use this for tutoring all the time, especially as a break when we're like working on other stuff. Um, so this slightly less of a game than some of the other ones, but still really helpful. Um, and then in addition to that, we're going to just jump ahead just a little bit because there is regular math dice for our older friends, which does add a multiplication component into it. You can even do exponentials and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. These are pretty cool. Um, so same idea. You roll those, multiply those numbers together, and then roll these. And then you try and get your target number. Um, so again, like sort of quick, sort of fun, nice as a brain break, great to play with in like restaurants or where we used to go or maybe in a park. Um, fun for camping as well because they're not going to blow away and get all soggy and wet. And that is Math Dice in a nutshell. Math Dice was actually created by the son of the former owner of Think Dice. Oh, really? uh, Think Fun. Oh, I didn't know that. 
know that. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. His son created it. And then it, yeah, it won some kind of contest or yeah, something and they fun. decided to publish it. I actually like Mathe Jr. better. The dice are fun. Yeah. <laughs> Big chunky dice are Big always fun. Another huge tip if you're trying to teach your children math. Children love dice. dice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> always, always, always. I don't know any child who does not like dice. I think it has something to do with the probability aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It's almost magic to a kid to like see what number is going to come up or like guess if they can roll a thing and then see if it happens. But I think there's something to it that kids just love dice. And if your kids aren't quite ready to like roll dice and keep them on the table, you can get a just like, you know, one dollar plastic Tupperware thing from the store and put all the dice in there and then they just shake it. So, you know, if you want to use it on an airplane or whatever, you just shake it and they don't go all over the place. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I use the little clear Tupperware or the Ziploc yep. containers. And you can use the smaller ones and just shake them. Like the dip it's especially one. good on um on airplanes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And okay, which one are we doing next? Secret code 13 plus 4. Ooh, okay. This was my son's third grade teacher's favorite game ever. Um, I gave it to her, her classroom at Maury Elementary, and she came in like the next week to tell me how much the kids <laughs> loved it. I was so happy that she used it in her classroom and that the kids enjoyed it. Um, we're going to play a couple hands yeah. of this one, right? Just a few. Okay, not just a, a couple. Game. We're not going to play a full game. But Secret Code 13 Plus 4 is okay. designed by the game company Haba, which I absolutely love. It's one of my favorite kid game companies. They have phenomenal games. And it's two to four players, ages <laughs> eight and up. Um, and it, they claim 15 minutes. Depends on how fast you're doing your math. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I threw a dial. Oh, my goodness. What do you I, know. I don't know. Somewhere above this. Underneath you, maybe? Oh, we need a Tupperware container. I know. Where's the Tupperware container when you need it? Um, I'm green. I'll be orange. Okay. What color do you want to be, Rich? I prefer yellow. No, oh, you took no, orange. Oh, no, 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 I guess not. Orange. No, it's fine. I'll be red. You're if red. you really want to see, you just go wrong with that. Okay. It's okay. All right. I need the other die. So, in this game, what you do... Wait, there's one missing. Mm. Is that an extra? No, it worked out just perfectly last time. I don't know. Okay, maybe. Oh, we're too far forward. Oh, okay. Uh. Yeah, there's one here. Uh -huh. Okay. We know okay. we're doing stream. This, I'm like, I know <laughs> that it worked earlier. Um, So, Secret Code 13 plus 4... You can kind of adjust this a little bit to the math abilities of the people that you're playing with, but this is how you basically play it. <clears throat> um, you are thieves, which is, I don't know, not such a great role model thing to do. We're on a heist. Yes, we're on a heist, and we're trying <laughs> to break into a museum, and in order to get past the laser alarms, um, you must get, um, you must figure out the secret code to enter the museum. You do that by, let's see if I can do this, rolling all of the dice. Well done. Yes. And you have to figure out how to make the next number using any kind of calculation that you want. It can be an addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, whatever you want to do. If you have that exact number, you can also just use that exact number. Once you use a die, though, you can't use it anymore. So, for example, in this scenario, I need to get a 5. So I could do 4, oops, 4 plus 1. Oops, that was a 1, I swear. 4 <laughs> plus 1 is 5. Then I can hop over that. Then I have to do something to get 6. I don't know if I can get six. Can I get six? Also because you snuck Oh yeah, that because laser. I snuck that. I want to flip that over so that the person behind me has to get another number and it might be easier or it might be harder. Um six. Let's see. Eight times three. Oh I don't know if I can get a six. Can I get a six? Uh only you hadn't used that one. I know. So I should have done. Maybe I should have done something <laughs> different. 
three. I could have done. Oh man, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Seven <laughs> minus four is three, and then I could wait, do. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. Five. <laughs> oh, oh man. So you Stop teaching, Kathleen. You have I to know. get past five first. I have to get past five first. Maybe eight minus three. Yeah, eight minus three is five, and then I have to get six. Um, so seven minus one is six, and then I can't go any further because I have an eight and a four. Oh, okay. It's your turn. All right. I cheated. Well, we're all on the same heist team. No, we're not. No, we're not. I like to think that we are. <laughs> uh, all right. So I have to get past a three, uh, and I have a four, which is not a three. I have a two, also not a three. A nine, not a three. And several eights, also not three. Um, so You could do nine minus eight plus two. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a good one. So yeah, let's get rid of See, that. we're helping. Yeah. We help our fellow thieves. Nine minus eight I Honor eight. among thieves. So that flips back to a five. And then I just have to get past two. Uh, eight divided by four equals two. Ooh, nicely done. Using and that division. Ooh. I can't get to one from with eight, so I'm stuck. Oh, person backwards? Yes. You're walking backwards. <laughs> well, he was checking out behind him. Like, Catherine making did sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I got a bunch of numbers. All right. Um, so we got a five here. I have a five and then a six. Okay, this is fine. All right, three and two is five. It'll go away. So to get past the six, you've got a two and a four. Oh, that's a six. Nine. Oh, that is that's a nine. a nine. The dots and a footy. The place. dot, there is for six and nine, the dot indicates whether it's a six or a nine. I am aware of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is two and four, and then I'll be here. And then I don't think I can get to a one with a nine and a four. It's been our bottleneck. So very far. wishful thinking. Yeah. yeah. So, and then you just keep going, and eventually you're going to come to bigger numbers um, or smaller numbers. And um, the, okay, so we have now come to a path you can either go on the left side of the dinosaur or the right side of the dinosaur. So sometimes before you do it, it is good to see which way can I get the furthest for. Um, I can get all the way through because I have a one right there and a seven right there and a four right there. Oh, dear. So boom, boom, boom. And I get in front of that and you have to flip all those over. Oh. Now I have to figure out how to get a six, but I only have a two and a five and a five. So I don't think I can get a six because I can get five or eight. So that doesn't help me. Yeah. Um, so there you go. But I got way up there. Yeah. And I flipped all those over so they're harder numbers for y'all. <laughs> this is a really engaging game. Like it's, <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, I love this, this game. Fine. So we got, oh wait, that's you. That's, yes. I I'm... could do... You can go and either one. way you want. So I've used my oh, one, is. and now I have to get that list. 18. 18. So then 8 plus 8 is 16, plus, plus 1 plus 1 is 18. Nice. And then you have a 4, yeah, which is four. not an 8. It's not an 8. <laughs> Try, though, it might. But she did pretty well. 18 is good. Almost as good as 3. Well, I don't like that at all. Okay. What are we going to do about this? Oh, you've got it. No problem. All right. So three. Um, nine. Boop. Eight. Boop. Look, and you have six too. What's that six. Oh. Oh. Um. And then can you? I don't think I can do anything with that now. Nope. I'm gonna steal the thing. You are. You're gonna steal the beautiful mask. Um. Okay, I have. This is not a very well organized museum. <laughs> <laughs> they only have the. It's like dinosaur bones. Okay, Mom. I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's not as good as the Smithsonian, but you know. <laughs> I have very high standards for museums now, uh -huh. Kathleen. Um, I can do six and then a four. Oh, wait, did I flip this one over? Oh, I don't know. Did you? 
Oh, you're just making it mean. I'm so this one over here. Okay, now I have to do a 14. Sorry. Let's see. Uh huh. I'm not okay. sorry. Nine <laughs> sorry. plus five is 14. Okay. Oh, she's backwards. And then That's I okay. can do my um four. And then I can do six plus two is eight. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right. Come on, Rich. Okay. I believe that they get how to do I this. I think they understand yeah. how this game works. <laughs> but we, we got really into it. We don't want to quit. But we need to show we them more games. games. We have so many games. Okay. We're going to say that I won. What? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Next up, we do have Moby to talk about, though. So there is that. Which is a victory in itself. Yes. Uh -huh. And you get to talk about a whale. <laughs> Everything is better if it comes in a whale. Oh, yes. Look, guys, isn't this adorable? It's a little whale. Except it's an upside down whale. Oh, I always forget we have to put some things this way. You know that camera directions are not my strong point. <laughs> so let's talk about Moby. Oh. I can talk about Moby. Could, I don't. I have not played Moby. You have not played Moby? No. Moby is a game in a whale. It's there is, this is regular Moby, which is for slightly older children. There's also Moby Jr., which I think we're out of right now, but we'll get back. But um, Moby Jr. is um, just easier math. Um, this one is basically, if you have ever played Bananagrams, this is Bananagrams with math. Ooh. You have a whole bunch of number tiles. Um, the tiles are from 1 to 12. And then you have operation tiles. There's the equal sign. There's um, multiplication and division. There's addition and subtraction. You divide these up to where all of the number tiles are in one stack and all of the operation tiles are in the other stack. And you're going to flip all the number tiles over. Um, and I don't remember. I think it depends on how many people you have playing the number of tiles that you take yeah do i have to shout something um, clever when i use up all my tiles flip or I don't, I don't think it's very good but they do call your little crossword puzzle thing a pod because it's a whale it's a whale yeah um and i think it's flip or something i don't think that it, yeah you can't i mean so you from can, now on we will be making whale noises as <laughs> when we're getting rid of our tiles <laughs> um you do get to um you you could also just yell split like you do in Bananagrams. And that makes more sense since it's a banana. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, <laughs> for two to four players, you take seven tiles. And for five to six players, you take five tiles. You then, as soon as you're ready, so if I have my six tiles here or whatever, um, six tiles, and then you have six tiles, you can do this one. One, two, three, one, two, three. I'll be at my okay. team. Okay. okay, then as I soon as you're ready, that. you basically flip them over and you try to make any kind of mathematical thing. And you can take as many of these as you want. Um, and you're trying to make them. Um, what? No, what are you doing? Nine plus nine minus two. If I put two tiles together, can they be double digits? No. Um, but you can, and this didn't help me, as soon as you have one tile left that hasn't been played, you can yell flip and everybody has to take three more tiles and add them. Um, the important thing to know is though, you can keep going. I don't know if anybody can see what I'm doing here, but like <laughs> that, you could do something like this. So you could do six plus two equals eight and eight equals three plus five. Or you could even just do six plus two equals three plus five. <laughs> Banana, what am I uh -huh. yelling? Five. <laughs> no, but so, and you're trying to go as quickly as you possibly can. There's tons of tiles in here. You're trying to get through all of them and whoever uses all their tiles first wins. It's pretty much straight up Bananagrams. Um, with these tiles, the only thing is you yell flip instead of split, and you take three tiles instead of one tile, which I do in Bananagrams anyway because it makes the game shorter. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. Um, the thing that I think is cool about this is with younger kids, you can do things like six plus two equals eight. Mm -hmm. And then with older kids, you can actually use the 
um, PEMDAS, the uh, order of operations, to do something like 6 minus 2 times 3 Ooh. equals whatever, and then you can do the other side of the equation. So your equations always have to be balanced, but you can use any number of tiles on either side of the equation. So once you get better and better with a uh, map, you can do some really cool stuff. I love it, but I think you need to shout out something more interesting than flip. Okay. Um, maybe we should look up whale noises and just make a whale noise okay. whenever. We could say spout. Oh, that would be fun. I like that. Okay, spout. we'll do spout from now on. It's more interesting. Okay, but that's Moby. Moby is really fun. Um, I enjoy Moby. Yeah. It's really nice. The tiles are the same color as the uh, the sheet the here, oh, <laughs> yeah. which makes see, it kind of hard yeah, to see them. Uh, I don't know. That's showing. Um, and if anybody wants to ask any questions, please feel free to put it in chat. We're kind of keeping an eye on chat, and um, we would love to hear questions or what your favorite map games are. Um, I think is the next one we're gonna do. Yeah. Fresh. Math Rush? Math Rush. Okay. All right. So this is Math Rush, and we just got this, what, last week? Yeah, I think so. I got it when I was looking for science games, and I found it, and I had heard a bunch of um, homeschooling people talk about it, and I'm like, oh, I want to see what that is. Okay, so it might look like, you probably can't see, nope, you can't see where I'm sitting, but it might look like just math flashcards, but this game is so much more than math flashcards. It's upside down again. Yes. All right. So, Melissa, I have a really hard time, folks, with camera directions. Obviously, I don't know where this. Where? Why is this not in this picture? Because it's lagging over there. Oh, okay. Um. So, in Math Rush, we have a whole bunch of cards that really are essentially math flashcards. So. So you could use it as flashcards too. You could too. use it as flashcards too, which is But what nice. I've always found is making a game out of it makes it more fun and the kids want to do it. That's true. And they don't fight you as much. All right. So we have some help cards that we can see over there. Let's see. Oh, you the help cards are... Hello, Friday. Hello, Friday. Oh, hi. A couple of years ago, my friend and I went to the store. Oh, Pi Day. Is it three or four? I now forget, Kathleen. I love Pi Day. Three. I miss Pi Day. All right. So in this game, we have these goal cards over here, which you can't see very well, but you can see that one. So we are trying to get, get eight cards that decrease in value. Um, and then we will earn some points on the bottom if we are able to do that in three minutes. So we're each going to get five cards. This is a cooperative game. It's important to t say that, which I like. Yes. Um, every, we are all working together. Um, we are trying to meet these goals. We all play at one time. Mm -hmm. If we get really, really stuck, we can use these help cards. Which is very nice. And um, the help cards will allow us to either remove any one, remove any of the no any number of the cards mm -hmm. off of here or we can all throw our hands away and get a new hand. Um, the important thing is that if something is already played down and you can add the same, if you, can, it, if you can make the same sum, mm -hmm. you can play a card can on top it. of that and that will count to these card numbers. So for example, we're trying to get um, up to eight down we're either trying to get down or... We're going descending numbers. Descending or ascending. Descending from 8. So That's I'm going to start with 21. Okay, 21. And then I would draw a card. That's pretty That's high. That's above 8. <laughs> no, right. these are the number. we need 8 cards that oh, got it. 8 cards that are descending from that. I am going to... And we would have a timer that is... Um, 4, there's a 5. I can't reach any more cards. Don't want your 5. Why don't you want my four? Because I want to play a four. Um, you took my four. There's so ascending from there. Wait, four. Oh, there's another five. I have to keep forgetting to draw cards. Yeah, and then five, and then we're ascending. There's six. What's that? Fifteen. There's 13 and then another 13. I need three cards. 
And, and you basically keep doing this until you get one of your goals. And then you flip it over and you get a new goal. And but then you flip it over and you get a new goal. The other super fun thing about this game is that when you finish the game, you tally up all your points. That's pretty standard. But You tally up the stars yep. here on the bottom of the goal cards. So you're trying to get as many goals as you can in three minutes, which um, Melissa and I both agree. Uh, speed math for children is miserable. and <laughs> <Hit or> miss. <laughs> like... You either it really love it kid. or you hate it with a burning passion. Yeah. I like this because it is cooperative, so we're all working mm -hmm. together. So if one child, if you're a child that has a hard time with speed math, it's not like just giving them a worksheet of yeah. multiplication or addition and subtraction and telling them do this as quickly as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. This one you're rushing, but it doesn't feel really like you're rushing. Yeah, you like always, you can kind of take your time. You can always ignore the timer too, or just start a timer and see in five minutes how many can we get. So that yeah. kind of removes the element. But when you do score, you get, like, rewarded cool names like Paladins of PEMDAS and Geometry Geniuses and Colossus. I, I like silly stuff like that. Um, and then the only other thing to mention is that the goal cards do get a little bit more challenging. They put um, a mortar board on the bottom of some of them. Uh, so they might be asking you for odd numbers only or less than nine or addition only. So... They get a little bit more challenging, but that is Math Rush. There are also some advanced um, cards with the numbers on them oh, that yes. are like harder math. Harder math. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is so Math Rush. That is Math Rush, and it's a new game, and we have it now. And it should be in our online store, which is store.labyrinthgameshop.com if and you're interested in buying it. Yeah. Now, if you want to talk about Math Flux and Sudoku. Oh, it's not mm. time to talk about my favorite one not yet. Not yet. Okay. You can wait okay. patiently. <laughs> Which one is your favorite? Well, when we get there, I'll, I'll announce it's my favorite. It's a surprise. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Um, I believe if you watch last week, um, we did, we actually played some of Chemistry Flux, mm -hmm. I think it was. Yep. And, um... The another one in the line of educational games that Looney Labs has done is Math Flux, and it has a whole bunch of different math in it. Um, it is a lot of fun. I really like this game a lot. Um, there's a bunch of different silly mathematical things going on, so that is an option too. Um, and Samoku is one of my favorites. I love Samoku, and nobody else <laughs> likes it as much as I do. It comes in a cone. Um, it does. It comes in a cone with numbers all over it, and um, it's a little bit like if you've ever played Quirkle or um, Iota, it's a little bit like that. So you start with some number of tiles, um, and you're rolling this die, which is not a normal die. It has three, four, or five on it. And whatever you roll, you're trying to, for the whole game, you're trying to make lines that will sum to a multiple of that number. So, for example, if I got this three, I could do a four plus a three, a seven plus a two is nine. So that would be a multiple of three, and I'm using three different colors. You have to always have different colors in your lines. Then I would score nine because that's what I got. Mm -hmm. And then you would go on the next turn and you would have some tiles and try to build off of that one. Build off of that, just like crosswordy puzzles. So you made 12, um, and they're all three different colors. So you could write 12, and then you would go, <coughs> and we keep mm -hmm. going. Cool. Um, you can do things like um, I could do something like this, which would be five and one, and then two and through two and one because I'm building this line, but I'm also building here, so I'd get three plus six would be nine for just that, and they're all multiples of three. So you keep building up um, to try and make the multiples of three. But I love Samoku. Um, it's basically Quirkle with math. Uh, Annalise, the age range for these games, so Zingo is 4 plus, and then Math Dice Jr. is 6 plus. The rest are 8 plus until we get to the very end. Yes. Um, I think, I mean, Samoku for me is enough fun that I, I like literally enjoy playing it. My son and I play it all the time. Um, what I have done with Samoku, I found that kids 
kids that are good at math can really enjoy this by about third or fourth grade. Um, they really start liking it by fifth grade. Um, what I did with my son when he was younger is we didn't roll the dice at the beginning and we just did multiples of five to start with because the kids learn multiples of five, five, 10, 15, 20 so early that then they're also kind of working on a base 10. And so they're adding things up to hit 10 or 20 or something like that. So we did that before we ever got into the threes and fours and we kind of worked our way up to that. Cool. Yeah. All right, Rich. But okay. that is some time. Oku. It's time. It's time for, for Rich's Zeus favorite game. Loose. Okay. I love Zeus uh, on the Loose. Zeus on the Loose is his favorite. <laughs> I, I really like this game. I this think it's game fantastic. Is great. Uh, there's this really goofy little yellow statue of Zeus. If you hold him sideways, uh, um, you'll be able to see him. So and Zeus yeah, he's here. He's upside down. Oh, no, he's upside down. Zeus is on the loose. <laughs> He's gotten away from Mount Olympus, and it's our job to catch him. Only one of us can catch him, though, so whoever catches Zeus at the end of the game is going to be the winner. Everyone gets four cards, right? So I'm going to deal them out. And your job is going to be to make Mount Olympus, which is just the discard pile, the pile of face-up cards in the center of the table, into a multiple of ten. Well, you're trying to get it to a hundred. Right. Do I incur the wrath of the gods if I drag Zeus back to Mount Olympus? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's probably more of a, uh, a history, history question, question oh. than a math question. Okay. <laughs> um, so Concerned. there'll be a, I believe we seed it with a, a first number. I uh, thought you just, you just I play, thought you just played. I play one? Yeah. Okay. I think you played. I lied. Oh, My whoever's, favorite game I got wrong. Whoever's the first player, I believe, just plays one. So if I just throw a four down there, uh, zero plus four is four. So Mount Olympus is worth four points right now. And the important, if, oh, go ahead. If somebody turns this into a multiple of 10, they get to steal Zeus. 10. So four Zeus plus is six nine. is 10. And it, Melissa has control of Zeus. And if we get to 100 points and she has control of Zeus, she'll win the game. So we got to get it back. It also has these fun god cards. Uh, yes. With I am going to subtract 10, which gets it to zero. So I get Zeus. Yeah. Boom. It also steals Zeus in the card. Yep. Um, yeah, so this is a god card. This is Poseidon. Um, Poseidon allows you to subtract 10 from whatever the current total of Mount Olympus, and then it says you get to steal Zeus. So I made it go back to zero, and I stole Zeus. Then I'll play Ares. Mount Olympus goes to 50, and yeah. I steal Zeus. Oh, no, I don't like that at all. And one card, and this is Hera, who makes it 99, and then the, you steal Zeus. I'm going to reverse it, so now it's back to five. Oh, oh, okay. So Hermes takes uh, the the digits and sort of swaps them into tens and ones them. spot. So if it's five zero, it now becomes zero five. And the god powers kind of match the personality of the gods a little bit. Sure. Yeah. It's loose, but yeah, it's there. Well, Zeus is loose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay, so it's five now. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't make it a ten, so that's a nine. Nine plus one is ten, so I can continue to have Zeus. Uh, I shouldn't have really done that. Eighteen. Eighteen. Twenty! I get Zeus! Uh, ah, Zeus shall be mine! Uh, let's do twenty-nine. Thirty-one. So you can hear us all calling out the, the numbers as we make it, so when it's your turn, you're doing a quick addition. Thirty-one. Thirty-eight. Yeah, you have to call out the number when you play your card, which I really like. So it's a lot of really good mental math. Mm -hmm. And since it goes up to 100, that's nice. 42 is 38 plus 4, four is 42. 42. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had to check in my head. Nothing oh, changes, no. but give me Zeus. Uh, no! Artemis. Artemis, let's use Artemis Zeus. Artemis makes you steal Zeus. So we're at 42. Mm -hmm. 32. Give me Zeus back. Hmm. Uh -huh. Let's do. Zeus uh, is mine. I'll play Apollo and I'll steal Zeus. Oh no! Mount Olympus is the same number it was before, which I didn't hear. It's Forty-two. Forty-two. Now we're at forty-eight. Forty-eight. Um. I have Hera, so it goes to ninety-nine, and I got Zeus. <laughs> uh, that's not great. Uh huh. Ninety-nine. <laughs> ninety-nine. Make it go over 100. 
Yeah, if I can make it 100 exactly on this turn, then I would steal Zeus and win because I made it a multiple of 10. Yes. I can't. I can't be <laughs> cheating. The only card I can play that doesn't end the game skips to the next player. Uh, so you would win anyways. Yes! Oh. Yay! Oh, and I win Zeus on the loose. Team Kathleen! That's true. That's true. <laughs> Well, Our game schooling people may not know about Team Staff versus Team Kathleen. That's true. Yeah. I think it's fairly straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one correct side. I'll let you Team Kathleen. No. Uh -huh. No. Uh -huh. but, Team yeah. Kathleen's currently winning. I have an attachment to this game play? because I, I used to play it at my job before here when I was working in an after school program. Mm -hmm. It was one that the kids were always happy to play. Uh, during their free time, which yeah, I think kids speaks. love Zeus on the Loose. Zeus on the Loose, I think, is probably one of the best hardcore math games that is also a lot of fun. And um, I think if any of your children like, or if anybody likes um, Percy Jackson, the Rick Riordan books, yep. Zeus on the Loose really feeds into that because you've got all the gods and things like that. And I, um, especially when Percy Jackson was super popular, getting people to play Zeus on the Loose was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, and if you haven't read the Percy Jackson books, you definitely should because they're phenomenal. They're amazing. Yes. All right, ready for prime time? Okay, prime time. It's prime time, it's prime time. This is like the fastest version of math games we've ever done. Like yes. all of the math games as fast as possible. <laughs> but we couldn't decide which ones we liked yeah. best. There are so many good ones. Dun, da, da, da. Prime Time blows my mind by how much math it teaches. I really love the concept of the board. Yeah, the board is really <coughs> attractive, too. It's very yeah. appealing for kiddos. If you've played Sorry or Ludo or Parcheesi, it's going to feel familiar, but it's just going to add in a little bit of uh, math. Uh, so I'm guessing Kathleen is green. And if that's okay. Yeah. Orange. Here, orange, and I'll be red. Okay. Okay. Um, this is an interesting game because in this game we have these um, D10s. This is, if you don't know, dice are normally referred to as D and then the number of sides they have. So these are D10 dice. They have 10 different sides from Z, uh, 1 to 10. Yes, mm -hmm. from 1 to 10. Um, and they, we're going to roll them, but instead of like in math dice where you're trying to make a calculation with what you roll, you are trying to make calculations with each of these dice with the number that you are on on the board. Um, you can either, you can do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You are trying to get to exactly 101. You cannot go over 101. You cannot go below zero. Um, and you must use some kind of mathematical formula to get there by using the die intersecting with or interacting with the number where you are. We all start basically on zero. So the first time most people, um, at least the first roll, will do addition um, because seven plus times zero is zero and you wouldn't go anywhere. Um, so... <laughs> You also, there are prime climb cards, and if you can figure out how to land on a prime number, you get to draw one of those cards. Sometimes they are an action card, which you must perform immediately. There can be roll agains, there can be other things that happen, and sometimes they're a keeper card. Keeper cards you have to hold, and you cannot use them on that turn, you must use them on a future turn and you must use them during the move phase of your turn. You can't necessarily play them on other people's turns and things like that. Um, the cool thing about this, and you can kind of see the board here, um, is that this board has basically factorization on it, um, which is really cool. So you can see down in this corner that two is represented by orange, Green represents three, blue represents five, seven is represented by uh, purple, and then all of the prime numbers, um, 11 and bigger, well, <laughs> 11 and larger, the prime numbers are in red. Um, so obviously two, three, five, seven prime numbers, um, but you're trying to figure out how multiplication and division work basically in this game. 
And it really, it's really cool because it shows you basically here at 75, you have two sections of blue and a section of green. So that's basically five times five times three equals 75. So it's showing you the, the factors for each of the numbers. Um, the dice also have that on it. So eight has two times two times two on it, which are is the factors of eight. Um, seven is prime, so it's just purple. But if you did seven times eight, you would be looking for something with three oranges and a purple. So even if your kids can't do seven times eight in their head, they can um, then look and see here that 56 has three oranges and a purple. So that is eight times seven, which I think is brilliant. Like, yeah. I love that. It really shows the kids how those numbers work together and how multiplication works. But that's that. Yeah. You want to roll and do a couple of turns? I would be happy to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this can be a very mean game, too. Uh, said, yes, it, it can be mean. I think, yeah. You also can basically, um, if you, at the end of your moving turn, if you land on a space occupied by another pawn, you can also bump your own pawn, then um, you can send that pawn all the way back home. So when we were playing this earlier today to make sure we remembered all of the rules and everything, um, at the very last minute, Rich sent both of us. We were all up here near 101, and he sent both of us home, and it was miserable. I had a card that let me do that, which was it felt really nice. <laughs> For you. Yeah. Um, okay, I got a 10 and a 2. I think I will um, go to 2, and then I'm going to jump to 20. So can I have my pawn? Sure. So, so I'm going to go to two, 2 with my first move plus two, and then I'm going to multiply two times ten, and I'm going to move that pawn to twenty and leave my other pawn there. Fantastic. <clears throat> I got an eight and a two. Uh-huh. Where um, are you? Well, I'm on five. That's not you. You're red. Oh, that's You're right. Red. I'm so used to it. Okay. So I'm on one and ten. So I could do, I think, ten times eight makes good sense, because yeah. that'll get me to eighty. Uh... And then I could do for two. Um, no, I'm on three. <laughs> Woo, three. Yeah. You could be on four. Two times two. Well, I was on one. Oh. So I could, I could multiply two to two. Or... <laughs> wow. Um, okay. I'm going to take a page Seven out of and ten. book. 90. Ooh, nice. Uh -oh. And then seven times five. Where's 35? Yeah. It's the blue and purple one. There it is. Okay. Can we show them some of the cards? Yes. Okay. I'm going to try and get on a prime number. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to move this one three. One, two, three. So I'm on 23, which is there a prime number. And I get a prime card. But you, I have to finish my movements first. Okay. Um, because if I move this one again and move off this prime number, mm -hmm. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. So that one I will just move to seven so that I can keep my prime number. So this is my prime card. I have a keeper and it says, so I can keep this for a future turn. I can't use it now, but I can add or subtract three from my, uh, for my pawn on some future move phase. So I just get to keep that and stack it up and use it later. And they also have these really fun ones that they are blank. Um, so that you can write your own cards, which is kind of yeah, fun. Yeah, that is really fun. Yes, both your pawns have to get to 101. Yes, both pawns have to get to exactly 101, which is very important. <laughs> Super important. 88. And you do not get a prime card when you land on 101. Even though it's prime, you don't get a prime card then. Huh. Huh. Yeah. I don't know if I approve of that. Is that also I think it's a seven and a one. Seven and a one. Okay. Um, so we're going to go here and here. Actually, here. Oh, wait. Nope, 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 nope. nope. And I get a prime card. Yep. Mm. Oh, okay. Reverse the digits in your numbers. No, you have to do it right now. Oh, I have to do it right now? Yep. We'll make that a 63. Uh-huh. And? And 79. Yep. 
And does this go back on the bottom? Or it's it just this card style. Yeah. So these are action cards. If they do not say keeper, they are action cards and must be done immediately. And they can be positive or negative. That um, was okay. It was all right. It didn't hurt you too badly. Okay, I got a nine and a four, and I'm on seven. Uh, seven times nine is 63. I think I'll do that. I know, our finger thing. <laughs> but I can also use this. It's two greens and a purple. So I believe it's 63, but I can check my math when I look. Ooh, it is two greens and a purple. And look at that. There's somebody on there. Oh. How do I help her? So <laughs> green goes to 63, please. Oh, how about that? Okay, so that was nine and seven. And so now I have a four. And I'm on 23. Four times 23 is 80, 92. Mm -hmm. um, 92 is two per oranges and a per and a red. There you go. I like well, it that. It shows you that the prime that goes yeah, into Yeah, the prime it. that yeah. goes into it is 23. So it's nice where it shows you. Uh-huh. I like that fine. That's prime time. Yep, yeah, that's and that's prime time. They want to quit now because I'm winning. Well, I want to talk about Lovelace and Babbage. Yes. It's my, it's my favorite map. Oh, and we only have nine minutes left, so yes. we need to so, we need to hustle up for we do. Lovelace and Babbage. We saved the okay. most complicated one for This last. is super complicated it map game. It is not a super complicated map game. It makes your brain melt, but that it is does. so good. All right. So this is Lovelace and Babbage, and I love it so much. I love it, too. Um... And it comes in this cute tiny little box and you get this really cool board that looks like oh to answer your question uh both of your pawns do have to get to one yeah we already we answered, already answered that right. um, you get this cool yeah. little board that looks like the inside of a mechanical computer and these absolutely charming little drawings of the early computer uh programming sort of creators so we have charles babbage you can see that my thumb is in front of his face that's super helpful i'm i don't charles think we're gonna babbage. have time to play but no. It's fine. We have Ada Lovelace and Mary Somerville, and I forget who the third one is. Uh, Luigi. Oh, um, Minabrea. Yes. All right. So in this game, you can see on this board, and I'm going to hold it up to the camera a lot. These first two rows have different math operations in them. So they're pretty easy. Add or subtract 1, 2, or 5, 10, 20, or 50, multiply, divide. And then this funny one on the end here is switch your digits. At the beginning of a game, everyone gets one of these really cool little score sheets. And you can see over here that you have a uh, column with different squares in them. So in this game, we are going to be trying to go for a goal of a number in order to earn and collect cards. These are patrons. These are called so patrons. So the, the concept of the game is that we are early computer scientists, mathematicians, and we are building the world's very first um, mechanical computer. computer. Um, and these are the patrons we're, we're fighting for patronage, basically. Yep. Yeah. So. so we're trying to get to these numbers. Um, we start up here with this 55, and then we notate which row and column we are using our math operation from, and then we do it. So if I'm trying to get to 30, I might say, oh, I'm at 55. So I'm going to do column A, 3 minus. So that's minus 5. And then I'm going to do column B, uh, 2 B2 minus, thank you for keeping track for me, in the next <laughs> row down, and then I would get to this card in my second row. Now, if Rich had gotten to this card in his first row by doing different math than me, he would get to pick which uh, set he gets to collect first. Um, so that's the basis of the game. As we go through, we add more and more uh, math operations. The math gets significantly harder. Yep, because you have um, more options available to you and it's things like add or subtract 17, which is a lot harder than add or subtract 5 in your head. Um, yes. We also have these cool ones that send you directly to a number um, and so on. And then the really terrifying part of this game that might freak people out is that once I finish writing my program and getting all of my numbers, I say, okay, I'm done. And then I flip this timer over, which is 60 seconds for everyone else to get finish, them, their, to finish program. their program, which is super fun. You play four rounds. Um, the first round, you only have the first two levels available for your program. Then each additional round, you add another row. Um, you get points based on a set collection aspect where you're trying to hit the numbers that the patrons want. 
um, to prove that you are good at programming um, mm-hmm. to get their patronage. And there's some special and, powers. And then there's some special powers. Each player um, has their 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 people's cards have special powers. Um, before the round starts, you get to go through all of your special powers and put one out, and that will have a number that you have to hit in order to gain that power, which can then be used on a future round, in a future round, yeah. or on a future turn. Yep, and there's a cool little booklet that comes with it that explains who, not only who the computer programmers are, but every single one of the patrons, like, in a sentence or two, so it's pretty basic, but, you know, that way you don't have to pull out your phone in the middle of a game in order to figure it out. Um, and I just really, really, really like the character art on this. I think it's super charming and lovely. Do we know if all of their special powers are the same or if they're different? I think that they're different. Cool. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I think there's some of them are similar, mm-hmm. but I don't think everybody has the exact same powers. I think the, oh, the there's numbers some of them are, are close. Too. Yeah, the numbers. The are numbers different. are definitely different, but, but and I think some of them are generally the same, but I don't know that any of them are exactly yeah. the same. But this is really fun. I am an adult and will play this voluntarily with other adults, and I know how to do math, so. <laughs> That's and, how good it is. I mean, this is definitely for your high school level oh, yeah. or more advanced math students. I think that you could play this with younger kids, but you would really have yeah. to slow it down. Like the speed the aspect gone. of this makes your brain just die. Um, my my son and I play this all the time. He destroys me in it. Um, but you know, it it's definitely it is a thing, especially because you get bonus points if you can use the operations down mm-hmm. at the bottom, which are more complex. So being able to do mental math with plus or minus 31 or 45 or 17 as fast as you possibly can and trying to hit all these different numbers because you're trying to hit as many numbers as you can in that program. So you want to try and get to 30 and then 90 and then 58 and try and figure out which order you can run this program to get all of those numbers. It is mind boggling. And you lose points if you make math mistakes. Oh yeah, you definitely you get bugs lose and there's a little picture of a bug there. Yeah, you do. Kind you, of amazing. You have to debug your program. It's Which bad. I did the first time we played and I was just like, oh, I can't <laughs> subtract five. That's fine. This is fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is a phenomenal math game. Uh, Lovelace and Babbage. It's Yay. by Artana. They do a lot of really, really, really cool science and math games. But um, yeah, there's a new one coming out, I think, this week or next week called Ooh. Evolution. It's uh, all about Charles Darwin. Ooh, it's not like Evolution for North Star Games, mm-hmm. but it's like on the origin of the species. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and the art is gorgeous, and I can't wait to get it. And maybe we'll show you that sometime in the next couple science. days. We do have next week's plan. Oh, and super last thing one. I want to do, we have a super special one that relates to math. One of the games that I wanted to show you tonight, but we realized we had way too much games, is a game by a local designer called Election Night. Um, and it is a really cool game that is super math heavy, but it's about electing a new president. And with the elections coming up, we thought it would be really fun instead of adding it into our math night or our arithmetic night to invite the designer to join us. And so on September 30th, he's going to join us um, calling in probably on Zoom or something like that Mm -hmm. and um, join us to teach us his game and talk about the really cool dice that he has for it and how to play and um, And yeah, that should be, and we're going to play the whole game and it should be really fun and we'll see who can get elected president. It's me. (laughs) Me. (laughs) So it means it's going to be rich. Excellent. I don't don't want the job. Y'all can (laughs) fight over it. Um, But anyway, that is only some of the math games. Yeah, that's like tip of the iceberg. Yeah. (laughs) But I hope that this is a great way to make kids that don't necessarily like math be willing to try it yeah and i think that it as everything we've said so far in the first three things a lot of this is about making it fun for the kids so not like adapt the game if you need to if it's too hard 
or the, especially in some of these that are speed based. Yes, get rid of the timer. Get rid of the timer, don't do it. Just play with the numbers and get the kids used to having a tactile number experience is mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Yep. And I hope y'all have a great time and we'll see you next week. Next week we're doing some kind of language games. Language arts. Yeah, are we gonna do like spelling or are we gonna do like storytelling? I was going more towards story storytelling and sort of language exploration rather than spelling. Okay. Spelling's too